Okay, welcome back. Um, we we have looked into um, uh, ways of how you know we deal with conflicts. We looked uh, a little bit more into uh, why why uh, conflicts are there. Um, what uh, um, and uh, we've also determined that conflicts happen because of the differences that we see in one another. Um, what happens when conflicts take place, the emotions that rise, what are helpful ways, what are unhealthy ways of dealing with these conflicts. So we, we, we've come up to that. Um, uh, now we're going to be looking at uh, seven steps on resolving conflicts, okay? Uh, uh, the, now these are steps that we, we look, off, look as instructions um, that we see um, both we, we've drawn both from spiritual as well as practical ways of dealing with relationships. Now this can this needn't just be for a husband and wife, but it could be in any form of um, any any other form of relationship. You could use these same principles, these same steps to resolve conflicts. Okay. Uh, now even as we've go, going through that, there could be sometimes. Uh, people or there may be uh, people dealing in their marriages with difficult situations that may not be easily resolved by the two of them. Uh, it is good, it is helpful, it is recommended that we get the help of a counsellor who's able to work with the both husband and wife uh, as um, you know they, they are dealt they are helped through this process. Sometimes when the pain or the rejection is really high because of um, uh, certain situations or certain instances, uh, having a third person to help you and practice this can sometimes be very useful because um, just dealing with, uh, with issues like this between two people, between the husband and the wife, um, sometimes may, you, know, you may be following the same patterns um, of uh, dealing with conflicts wrongly and uh, not seeing any change. So getting the help of a counselor or someone to mediate may be a useful thing. So this next hour, we are going to be looking at the seven steps to resolving conflicts. Now in your books or in your notes, you would have noticed that um, in these seven steps, there are seven steps there. And I think it's uh, put up in a, in a small, like a tabular form, you see, the numbers written. So the first three steps is something that you need to do individually before you meet with uh, with your spouse to resolve conflict. So first three steps is something that you do individually. And the next four, four to seven, is what you engage with your spouse or whoever you're having the conflict with. with OK? Um, so let's look at look at this uh, once again. Remember now, these steps um, are not magical. Okay, it's not that. Okay, I've done all these seven steps, but then still, there isn't any change. But these are uh, intentional uh, instructions that we see, you know, from scripture as well as through practical guidelines in dealing with a conflict. So these are the most helpful steps. That you'd see. So let's go through the first three. The first one is to um, pray and prepare your heart. Now, what happens in conflict? When, like we had spoken earlier, that in conflict you will feel bitter. You could feel resentful. Uh, you could be angry. And so that space itself keeps you not having our hearts right with God. Okay, so when if we aren't right with God or if we aren't right in what's going on, we will respond from that hurt and from that bitterness. Okay, so when there is anger that takes place or when there is a conflict that takes place, anger comes about, and we are when we are in a place of deep emotional struggles. We may be thinking and doing things that aren't right in the eyes of God. So the first important thing is um, we will need to get ourselves right with God. And 
the first step is to pray and prepare your heart. This is going to God in prayer, coming to a place of confessing to him where you're at, what you're feeling. Maybe it's just spending some time just sharing about your hurt, your pain. And we see in the Psalms, very often David did that. You know, just going to God and lamenting. Lamenting about his struggles, his pain, or just pouring out his heart. Okay? So we come to a place, coming to God in prayer, and really confessing what we feel in our hearts. Now, when, when we have come to a place of awareness, that what we are going through inside, the hurt, the pain, the anger, that's, we know that we aren't right, we come to a place of cleansing and asking him to cleanse us of all what is happening with, within. And we take that step to renounce every ill feeling that we may have towards the person in question, whether it be resentment, bitterness, rage, um, anger, upset, uh, retaliation. We renounce it and say, I want to come to a place where I give up these ill feelings. And when you come for cleansing, you're coming to seek God for his grace and help you have a heart that is pure before you come to the next few steps of four and seven, right? Because you need to be in a place of releasing your pain, your hurt, confessing it to God, asking God to cleanse it, and coming to a place of readiness to discuss your issues or the issues that have hurt you. So you're coming to him and asking for, uh, one, you're pouring out, you're sharing, you're venting. You're asking for a cleansing. And you're asking for a healing, asking the Lord to heal your heart and pain and bring about clarity, right? So if when we look into scripture, we see um, uh, the psalmist praying this. He said, examine me, O God, and know my mind. Test me and discover my thoughts. Find out if there is any evil in me and guide me in an everlasting way, right? And also the, the psalm that David prays, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. 50, psalm 51 verse 10. So, these, so you're coming to God, sharing, going through whatever pain or anger you're feeling. So first and foremost is to pray and prepare your heart um, before you. Um, get to the next step of meeting with with your with with your spouse or whoever is involved. Now, once you've come to a place of confession and praying, uh, you also need to be in a place where you're receiving the the love of God to release forgiveness. And we know that, especially in very very difficult situations and circumstances where we where, where we are terribly wronged, only God can empower us to love and walk in love. Um, humanly, it is absolutely not possible. It's only the Spirit of God that fills our heart with his love so that we can extend forgiveness. With the, in our own strength, in our own ability, we all know that isn't possible. It is the love that God pours out in our hearts, Romans 5.5. 5. The love that he pours out in our hearts, that's done by the power of the Holy Spirit, that will help us come to a place of love and forgiveness. Because when the Spirit is within us, he's the one who produces the fruit of the Spirit, one of which is love. So when you come, to a place of um, being empowered by God's love, by, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And when you walk in that kind of love, we are also doing what God wants us to do. Because when we are there, we, we understand that we can overcome and have victory. 
Hmm? So the love that is in our hearts, that is poured out by the Holy Spirit, is what helps us to be patient, to be forgiving, to be kind, to put aside those difficult emotions and to be able to move forward. So you're coming to God to be empowered by him to love and to forgive. Okay. So uh, what do we do when we are praying? When we are praying, we are acknowledging that the power and the work of the Holy Spirit is in us. Right. And when that is there, we can walk in the love of God. So no matter what the situation is, when we come to God and give praise and rejoice and thank him for that, his love is what helps to heal, helps us to come to a place of patience and kindness. So pray and thank that the Holy Spirit will empower you to walk in the love that is described in in that chapter in first corinthians chapter 13 okay because it's only the holy spirit that can help you not hash out a whole lot of wrongs and uh, and difficulties uh, a record of the wrongs that's been done but brings you to a place of forgiveness <clears throat> and helps you to let go of those hurtful or those wrong things that may have been said or done. So the first two is to pray and prepare your heart. And the second one is to receive uh, the, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit to empower you to love and to forgive. Uh, are there any doubts? <clears throat> are there any doubts at this point or any questions? <clears throat> Nobody? OK. Today, the class has been extremely quiet. I don't know if the, if the lesson is that sobering. OK, we'll move to the third one, which is, so from a place of preparing our hearts, having come to a place where we are open and receiving the love uh, of God and releasing forgiveness um, we're also asking the lord for wisdom and understanding to resolve the problem so the way that we resolve a problem needs wisdom okay so that it doesn't move a conflict into a very um, heated argument so it takes wisdom to know what can be some of the causes or the root causes that have given rise to the problem. And where do we get our wisdom from? James 1.5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, what does it say? Then if you lack wisdom, ask. You should pray, uh, ask him, and he will give to you. Because what he gives is generous and gracious. That's what it says. He will give graciously and generously to all who ask him. So when you need wisdom and understanding to resolve a certain conflict, ask in faith, knowing that and expecting that God will lead you to the right kind of solution. Okay, the, we, we know that the, um, uh, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives wisdom. He's the spirit of wisdom. Isaiah says that, right? And he's the one who gives you the way, the knowledge, the understanding, the idea, the right solution to address whatever the matter is. Okay. So one is asking the Holy Spirit. The other is to go back to God's word for wisdom. God's word is wisdom. It helps in anything that we want. It, it, it gives us instruction for anything in life. So in addition to asking the Holy Spirit, praying to the Holy Spirit, praying and listening to the Holy Spirit, we are also looking at the word to help us address some of the situation. Okay. The 
um, now when we're looking at wisdom, I think at this point of time, it's very important to differentiate um, the wisdom of the world and the wisdom that comes from God. Okay. Uh, and I'd, uh, I'd like you all to turn to James chapter 3, verses 14 to 18. And if any one of you can read that, James 3, 14 to 18. I'm in 112 in the hard copies and 111 in the soft copy. So would someone kindly unmute and read James 3, 14 to 18. But, but if in your heart you are jealous, bitter, and selfish, don't sin against the truth by boasting of your wisdom. Such wisdom does not come from, down from heaven. It belongs to the world. It is unspiritual and demonic. Where there is jealousy and selfishness, there is also disorder and every kind of evil. But the wisdom from above is pure first of all. It is also peaceful, gentle, and friendly. It is full of compassion and produces a harvest of good deeds. It is free from prejudice and hypocrisy. And goodness is a harvest that is produced from the seeds the peacemakers plant in peace. Okay, thank you, Ren. So when you look at this, uh, this entire uh, 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 scripture passage, it gives you a distinction about what is the wisdom of the world and what is the wisdom of God, okay? In the wisdom of the world, we see that the foundation of the wisdom of the world is bitter, it's selfish, and it's jealous. That is, it is um, motivated by these three things, by, by these three uh, specific emotions. It says, it's, um, uh, you know, it tends us to be jealous, it tends us to be selfish, it tends us to be bitter. So anything, any wisdom that comes that motivates us to further these emotions, okay, we do see that it is sin. So this kind, and it says this kind of wisdom is unspiritual and it is demonic. And so when there is something that is unspiritual and demonic, what does it do? It opens the door for more of disorder, more of evil. It, it says there is also disorder in every kind of evil. So whenever there is jealousy or selfishness, you can't expect anything else to come. So it opens the door for further evil. And then that means you know it perpetuates that jealousy, that bitterness, that selfishness, that anger. It perpetuates it over and over again. And I'll, we'll come back to, let's or maybe we'll look at an example. So let's say, you know, uh, uh, a husband or a wife goes to her friends and is talking about the way the husband um, um, maybe works late. Okay. And these are very simple examples. Okay. I'm not quoting anybody here, just a simple example. Uh, works late and doesn't have time for the wife. So the wisdom that the world can give is, OK, if he doesn't have time, why don't you also go explore outside? Why don't you go find ways where you can connect with other people, maybe other men? Or they bring him back to you. He will become jealous, and he will bring him. He will come back, OK? Now, what kind of wisdom is that? You see, the wisdom is motivated by anger or by selfishness, right? And it opens the door for more uh, unspiritual, demonic work. That is, now let's say this woman actually goes and does this. What happens? The husband's not going to say, oh, my poor wife. You know, he's going to come rage with jealousy and anger. There's going to be further bitterness, further violation and further uh, disharmony, a lot of hurt, a lot of rejection. So you see that this kind of wisdom the world gives is usually motivated by some form of selfishness. And, and there are a huge number of examples that we can bring up here, right? Um, the, the wisdom that comes from, uh, from, from further strife, from creating further strife. 
Whereas the wisdom of God, it says, is pure, right? It is first of all pure. It's peaceful, gentle, friendly, full of compassion, produces a harvest of good deeds. It's free from prejudice and hypocrisy. So you see, it is pure. That is, OK, so the same example, maybe a wise woman or a wise friend will say, it's a good thing to go and talk to your husband about it. Share with him what your concerns are. Get support, get help. Uh, because it is to, you need to rebuild the marriage. So you are actually working towards peace, working towards gentleness, working towards a good deed, a harvest of good deeds, and working towards being a peacemaker. And you're free from prejudice. It says it is free from prejudice and hypocrisy, meaning you're not coming very biased, saying, OK, you know, he doesn't love me, he doesn't care for me, but you're saying, I'm going to do all that I can to share my emotions, to share what I'm going through. Okay, So how do you differentiate if you're walking in divine wisdom, or especially when you're addressing a conflict, if you're walking in divine wisdom or you're in earthly wisdom, to know where it is motivated by? If it is motivated through selfishness, or is it motivated in building peace, in, in purity? Okay, now. Uh, so even as we are praying, you know, and, and this, this I think is an extremely important thing to understand that the ability to have wisdom comes only from the power of the Holy Spirit. And to ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom in your situation on how to resolve a certain matter. So to continue to uh, look for him, seek him, wait for him, bring down all your thoughts and your ideas, your plans before him, and asking him to be Lord over those thoughts and ideas, asking him to show you the root cause of those conflicts and to help come to a place of forgiveness and ask, uh, come to a place of being able to resolve that. So. Even as God may be showing you some of these things, you may be, it may be needed for you to receive it, right? And that, that means you're asking God to help, not, help you not just forgive, but to help you to correct the way uh, certain, certain things uh, that, that are needed, OK? Now, often I see sometimes you know, in marriages what happens is we, we blame the devil for a problem that we ourselves must work towards okay but it is true yes the enemy does steal kill and destroy and when we give him a foothold he definitely comes in all out with confusion and strife okay so uh, so it's important for us to really know what door we've opened what way have we opened for the enemy to walk in and cause confusion okay so it, it is needed that we renounce repent of what we have allowed the enemy. We've given a free hand for the enemy to do um, and opened some of that. So renouncing that, repenting of that is a way of, um, of, of using wisdom to deal with our struggles. OK, so the first three we spoke about praying, preparing your heart, receiving God's empowering to love and to forgive, and to receive God's wisdom to address the situation. OK. Now, before we go to the next uh, next four, uh, do you all have any any thoughts, any comments, anything? I'd like maybe one or two comments, please. Anybody? Jacqueline, been very quiet today. Any comments? Any thoughts? Yeah, I'm just thinking of my own <laughs> like, <laughs> like how, how much, you know, at the especially uh, for me, like I keep bottling up stuff and then, you know, I know like I shouldn't be bottling it up. And what happens is suddenly one, one fine day, it's like a pressure cooker. And even though sometimes I know like, you know, these are the things that you're not supposed to do. And 
and that love forgiveness and everything has to be there then especially when it comes to your own loved ones and you expect something and it just happens sometimes but as i as i am reviewing this class today one thing is so sure that you know god's grace and love is available for us at any point in time and when we realize that and go to him uh, like recently it's all this i'm doing lord i don't want to speak i don't want to think my way because everything is wrong but i know you can help me so that surrender and submission through years of marriage that i've struggled with is like only that freedom that i've got is only through the you know the prayer that the first step that we that you shared it's like getting right with god so many times i'll be like why don't you speak to him god <laughs> is this the same sermon lord <laughs> so that was something the struggle that i had but when i let go of that thought and asked the lord lord you help me because i don't have wisdom but you can help me so at that point especially the wisdom of god it has changed my life so much because sometimes i feel the worldly wisdom is not at all wisdom because that's what the people teach and like you know in whatsapp we get so many things like you know people will they, he will think that you are a, a doormat and all don't allow <laughs> don't allow speak for yourself but what god says is you know just be humble humble yourself before me so when you're humbling before god then you need to be having that meekness before men so the mm. humble before god just has to show so that's mm. what i personally learning i didn't have the strength to strength or courage to share but thank you for bringing it out thank you mm. thank you so much jack and i really really appreciate i mean it's not easy Uh, for us to share these things and because these are personal um uh, and and just like you we all go through these struggles it it is sometimes can be so hard to when we know and and it's even worse because you know you know that you have to extend grace extend love extend forgiveness you know it but yet you you you're in a place that you find it so hard but it is the grace of god that leads us to it and it is uh, I, i it it's also a heart of obedience that is a god i'll do it because you want me to do it i don't feel like it i don't understand it but yeah. i know this is what you want me to do and yeah thank you so much for sharing that so true thank you okay okay right so let's move to um the fourth fifth sixth and seventh step and these are more practical steps at least the first two are more practical steps uh, to understand what can you do to address um now if you look at all the steps the first three steps are actually easy why because it's just you and the lord it's just you and the lord in conversation very easy to talk to talk to god but it is challenging to discuss and address the matter which means you're going to be asking your spouse to sit with you to maybe you have to take the initiative to say you know i've thought about what happened and i'd like to come and discuss it with you right so you may face a uh, total rejection and say no i don't want to talk about anything anymore okay so so that then the hurt comes back all over again this could be yes the most challenging step but nevertheless it's something that we need to do okay and uh, often one way uh, uh, some of the things that we can consider or, or we should keep in mind is one um prepare ourselves you know yes that preparation has happened we prepared ourselves this far we are also being intentional we are setting we set a time we set a place where you're inviting your spouse to discuss something with you okay finding that place and that time where you can actually um uh, do this together okay and as we had spoken about how do you engage with something maturely is to address one issue at a time so think about okay this is one issue maybe the way that he spoke to me or she spoke to me in front of everyone that is the one issue that i want to be addressed rather than thinking of okay i want to solve this i want to solve that 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 some 25 problems comes 
it is important to just address one issue at a time. Okay, some practical ways of dealing with it with it is um, uh, coming to a place of um, talking about about the issue. So uh, you, you're you're actually bringing the issue uh, uh, and discussing. What what you felt about it, and, and you will see this in points. I'm, I may not be going chronologically. You can take time to read it, okay? But often when we are trying to address a problem, uh, we may not notice. Uh, we may say, I've said it so nicely. I've said it so kindly. But often the words we use can, can definitely um, not say that, right? So I may want to say, um, like maybe the situation is, Maybe my spouse said something rude or said something to me in front of other people. Okay. So I may say it in a very nice way. Say, you know, I just wanted to share that you said this yesterday. Maybe you're saying it in a low tone, a calm voice. Nevertheless, the words that you use may not help. You know, you said this, you called me this name in front of my parents. What do you think they would have thought of me? Mm, uh, you know, you've done this two, three times before. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's not a very nice thing to do, right? So this usually when you have sentences that have a lot of you in it, it definitely leads to a defense, okay? So changing your language and sharing about where you're at, what do you feel because of the incident? So, so to turn it around, You'd say something like, you know, I felt hurt when yesterday we were all having dinner together. Um, there was a mention about something I've done in the past. And uh, it, it made me feel alone because everyone after hearing that laughed about it. Um, and I felt really rejected. I felt alone. I felt um, I was, I, was I, I didn't sense your support there. So I'm sharing taking responsibility about what I'm feeling, rather than sounding accusatory by saying, you didn't do this, you did that, you did this, you did this and this and this and this, rather than I said, I felt like this when this happened. I felt bad, I felt insulted when all, all the people over here laughed about something you had mentioned. So taking that time to discuss what you're feeling. Now, once you have spoken, allowing the other person also to share what they have thought. We often cut the other and don't and and don't um, uh, give space to to hear. So often we listen to answer. We don't listen to understand. So that's important. So and even as we're speaking. We're avoiding judging, criticizing, blaming, attacking. We're avoiding bringing up those, uh, you know, those things over and over again. So what are we looking at is to make the conversation absolutely honest. So you're focused on talking about your feelings, your thoughts, your impressions. OK, so starting those um, discussions in that way. Another thing that you do when you're talking about a discussion is look at the good things that has happened. You know, so far in our relationship, I've seen that you know this is really nice. I really appreciate this of you. This is wonderful. I really feel like this. But I wanted to bring up this one thing. So, so bringing about the positives or the good things first before we talk about something negative helps. Okay, and. Uh, once that is when you know you you're kind of giving examples or you know spoken about this, um, then coming together to brainstorm certain different solutions to the sp specific problem. You're brainstorming alternatives to that, and then you evaluating it together and finding out what is the best alternate. Now this can take a uh, time. It's not that it's done in one sitting. Uh, this could probably, especially depending on the matter, it can take very many, you know, different different points of time till you come. Some of the discussions may be, may be much more easier, right? So discussions need to be done. Even though they're not easy, it is something that needs to be done. Sometimes um, these discussions 
often cannot be, sometimes can't be done just by the two people because there's so much of emotions that rise in. So actually getting the help of someone else really matters. Okay, So lovingly discussing the matter. The fifth one is to be able to resolve the matter with, in peace, resolving the matter in peace. Okay. Um, in whatever situation or, or, or uh, uh, you know conflict we are attempting to resolve, we're looking at doing so with a heart of peace. W what we're doing is we are being a peacemaker and we are being a peacekeeper. So the, there are relationships of, of uh, the relationships that break with with us can can sometimes um, affect our own relationship with God. So when we continue to walk, um, a, a, you know, when when we when we walk in that place of love and forgiveness uh, and peace, it is it also works in a way in our relationship with God. So whenever we are resolving a matter, we're keeping this in mind: How can I be a peacemaker? Right? Because being a child of God, what can I do to be a peacemaker? What can I do to be a peacekeeper? Now, this doesn't mean when you're saying peacemaker, this doesn't mean you do not resolve issues. And if I say this, it's going to cause the trouble. So it's best to keep, be a peacekeeper and not say anything about that. It's to working towards peace and unity by actually discussing and uh, the, the the matter, right? So. Uh, so what you're doing, uh, so what that also means is to be able to humble ourselves, to accept what I may have done, which is a, which is a wrong, and make changes in the way that I am doing certain things. So when you do certain things right, it is what brings a lot of peace and confidence. Okay. So um, it, on the flip side, if you feel you have been wronged, it is seeking the power. What we're doing is not holding on to something without uh, without forgiving. So when when you you're in a place of um, uh, forgiveness, or or when when you you're willing to forgive, you're also attempting to resolve something in peace, and that's one way to resolve a matter in peace is to be able to give and uh, uh, give and receive that forgiveness okay we remember this and just like it's written uh, in scripture forgive as forgive one another just as the lord has forgiven you so just as you and i have received forgiveness from the lord we are also giving forth that forgiveness to one another so we're not just accepting what we have done wrong we are acknowledging what is wrong we apologize for what we've done dog done wrong and recognize that whatever we've done has caused hurt and pain to the person and asking them for that for that forgiveness okay so um uh, when you have uh, and and this this happens two ways okay it's just not one way it's something that happens both ways where both um both the husband and the wife seeks that forgiveness now once you have made a commitment to forgive you have made the um, you've come to a place of willingness to forgive. You're not holding a grudge or bitterness towards your spouse about that matter. What what does forgiveness means is to give up, is to let go, is to release that the hurt that has been caused, the emotions that's been caused, or any kind of anger towards the person. Right. So it is releasing all of that. That that may have brought about pain. So when you're giving forgiveness, what you're also doing is you're making a deliberate, intentional choice that you will not repeat some offense that either you said or you did towards your spouse. Okay, when you're choosing to let go of the past, you're also choosing to not repeat a certain wrong that you've probably done when you've when you've come to a place of confession okay the last one is to be able to release a blessing 
Now, when you're releasing a blessing, the first thing you do is you need to release the past. You need to release um, whatever has happened. So you're making that choice to let go of the past that's happened, and you are choosing to release blessing over your spouse. So uh, when you're paying back with a blessing, what are you doing? You are leaving back any form of evil. Uh, as it says in First Peter chapter 3, verse 9, do not pay back evil with evil or cursing with cursing. Instead, pay back with a blessing because a blessing is what prom God promised to give you when he called you. So you're giving up all thoughts of evil, all thoughts of anger, maybe even um, any, any way that you can uh, take revenge. You're conquering all of that by releasing a blessing. Now, releasing a blessing also means thinking thoughts of blessing, where those negative thoughts come up, or when you remember the either the things that have been said or things that have been done, the negative thoughts do come up. So you're choosing to cast down those thoughts, to bring down those thoughts, and reminding yourself to walk in that forgiveness, in the love that God has put in your heart. Reminding yourself that you are here to follow peace, to, to bring about peace. You are here to release that forgiveness. Okay, So when, when you make up your mind not to think about those negative thoughts, then you know, the, the, uh, you're able, God will give you the grace to begin to see your spouse in a different light and thereby release that blessing, release that, um, that, that word, that, that word of blessing over them. Okay, so these are the seven steps that we looked into. Um, the first three, like I said, is um, individual. It's pray and preparing your heart. It is to receive the um, power of God to forgive and to love. The third is for wisdom, uh, 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 um, the wisdom of God to deal with the situation. The fourth is to discuss the matter, coming forth, discussing the matter. The fifth is to do so in peace. Sixth is to for forgiveness, and the seventh is to release a blessing. Um, now, it's often always better to keep strife out of any home, right? Uh, when because whenever there is a lot of anger, a lot of quarreling, the home becomes a place for you know the enemy to dwell. So it becomes difficult. When there is strife, it becomes very difficult. There is no peace at home. Everybody's health, mental health, physical experience of their homes are affected. And also, it opens the door for the enemy. So it's important to live without strife. And the best thing to do is follow the example, um, uh, for follow what God has in his word for us. Because it says, um, in Proverbs it says, with understanding and wisdom a home is built. Right. So that wisdom and understanding comes from the word of God. Keeping our lives in the word of God keeps uh, strife and keeps difficulties away from us. OK. All right. OK. Um, I've come to the end of that lesson. Is there any? Any thoughts, any questions, any comments that any of you would like to bring up before we end? Nothing? OK. Then let's just close with a word of prayer. Uh, Jackin, may I request you to kindly close with a word of prayer, please? Yeah, sure. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time, Lord God. Father, even at this time, Lord God, as you have taught us, Lord God, from your word, Lord God, help each of us, Lord God, to use what you have taught us, Lord God, during times of conflict, Lord God. Father, we commit each of us into your hands, Lord God. Father, 
your word speaks to us, it's correct, it corrects us, rebukes us, Lord, and it strengthens and empowers us to live a peaceful life with everyone, Lord. Father, you've called us as your children to be peacemakers, Lord. Help each of us, Lord, wherever that we are, Lord, especially our homes, Lord God, to sow peace into our lives and to the lives of those around us, Lord God, so that we will be able to quickly forgive, Lord God, and come to the reconciliation with you because you love us so much, Lord God, and you keep on loving us. You do not count on our sins, Father God, and you don't keep record of our wrongs, Lord. Help each of us, Lord, to diligently, Lord, to seek you, Father, with all our heart, soul, and mind, Lord, to love you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty matchless name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. I just have a. Uh, I just have a um, announcement. Um, your gr uh, first assessment will be put up. Uh, the online students, your first assessment will be put up by t uh, tonight. Um, please ensure you will have a week to complete it. Please ensure that you complete it, um, because without that, you will you will not be able to. Uh, you know, your, 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 it will affect your grades. Okay, so the first assessment will be put up for the online students. For the e-learning students, it's already uh, it will be put up by five o'clock today. So please ensure that um, you complete your grade one assessment, uh, your first assessment, so that um, you will have your certificate. Barring that, you may not get a certificate. Okay, um, they're simple, multiple choice questions. Very, very, very simple. Um, and it uh, uh, the the portions are from where we started to last week's um, class, last week's lecture on communication. It is still there that the paper has been set. Okay, so kindly ensure that you do it, um, uh, and uh, yeah, please attempt that. For the for the online students, it will be put up by this evening, so you have a week to do that. Any time in the next one week, um, you can get it done. All right. Thank you all so much. God bless your week. We will meet again next uh, next Thursday. God bless. Thank you.